Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to turn this model into a dual extruded model. More and more printers are coming out that can do dual, triple, or even quad extrusion. Whether it's the Ultimaker 3, which has one nozzle below the other always, so there's no sort of oozing or smearing of colors, or you have something like BCN3D or Maker Gear printers where there's independent X axes. So one comes in, does a color, goes away, and the other moves in, does a color, and moves away. This way, you also prevent the oozing and smearing of colors. But then, of course, there is the fairly standard way where both nozzles are at the same height, which could have some oozing and smearing of colors, get a little red and white, um, or vice versa. But you can also use the Mosaic Palette Plus to take four filament in and take it out as one, so you could use it on a single nozzle printer with four colors. But how do you actually design a part for dual extrusion? Well, there's different ways to go about it. You can either design it from the ground up in SOLIDWORKS, Fusion 360, Blender, Tinkercad, and there's different ways within each program on how exactly to do it. But today, I'm going to talk about how to do it with a model that already exists and convert that into a dual extruded model. And to do that, we're going to need NetFab. Stanford Bunny is a 3D model that was designed to test 3D renders, but it also works as a decent calibration print. So we're going to do most of our work within the repair menu, which is the little red plus at the top. And within this, you can do all sorts of mesh modifications with either extruding or changing where things are. And if you select just the triangle at the top, you select one triangle at a time. If you hold control and drag, you can select multiple triangles. Or if you click on something you've selected and drag, you can deselect them. And you can also just click one at a time to manually select each triangle. There's also select surfaces, which will try and select one full surface that ends at a harsh edge. So you can see that it detects either the entire flat bottom and then will actually curl it around because it's not a harsh edge right there. But towards the front, it'll select just this small section of the feet. There's also select shells, which will select the entire shell. And in this case, since there's no holes with the model, it's an intact model the whole thing is selected. Now if we leave part repair, we can come back and duplicate the model, and we're going to want to not arrange the parts. Now this is really useful in other cases, but right now we want them to stay in the exact same place and not separate from each other. So I'm going to rename the first one into color 1. And let's rename the second one to bunny color 2. So we're going to make one of these the first color and modify the second to be the second color. So then we'll go into the part repair and we'll start selecting the body. For bunny color one, we want to leave behind the head. So we need to go through and select everything we don't want. In this case, the body. Use the select surfaces or the select triangles for a little more control. Once we're happy, we can just delete. And then from here, if you turn the head around, you're going to see that there's a hole where the neck used to be because there used to be faces that would hold it in place. We can just go into the Actions tab and click Trivial for small holes or All for something big like that. Now with the second one, you want to go through and leave the body behind. So we'll select just the head using the select surfaces to get most, then come back through with the select triangles to pick up the rest. And you want to make sure to zoom in and check for any triangles you may have missed because it's possible that there is a very small one that will just end up floating in space there. Once you've deleted it all, you're just going to cover the hole, apply, remove old part. There we go. We've got a body, a head, and you can see that they're different colors, which means they're different models, they're different STLs. So we can even go through and use NetFab's cut through Z tool and pull it up and see that there is a clear line between where each body part is. So this model is now ready for dual color 3D printing. Now here we have Phil. Phil is a high poly model which means he's got 170,000 triangles which is going to make it a little more difficult and strenuous on your computer to be able to work on it but it's completely doable. So you can take 
things like his logo, the toe caps, the gloves, the visor, the vents, any sort of feature that you want to be a separate color, we'll need to do the same thing and make a duplicate model for each individual part. Now I do it this way because it's just a little easier to work with, but we'll make one duplicate base fill, which will just be the original so we don't mess with it, and then we'll make the duplicate be chest logo. From here we can go into the repair tool and use select surfaces to select the faces at the back of the logo. And this will just make it easier to delete some things because we'll select these, inverse with the green and blue triangles, and delete. Then we'll come back, select these faces, click extrude, and we want this into the body, so we'll do a negative 1.5 millimeter extrusion. And sometimes what can happen is it can mess with the faces and make it negative, but if we right click and flip triangles, it'll seal it up and it'll be a lot easier to work with. Apply, and there we go. Now this chest logo is gonna have some problems if we subtract it from fill because it has some faces that overlap. So we'll duplicate it and modify the duplicate in the part repair tool again. But first, we're gonna rename it to chest logo removed so we don't mix up which one we're trying to work with and which one we're trying to subtract or add to each other. Now that's renamed, we'll go to part repair. Now in here, we're gonna do the same thing with an extrusion again, except this time, rather than extruding into the body, we're gonna select the front faces and extrude out of the body. And it doesn't have to be far, 0.01 millimeters, one millimeter. Really, you just need it to be a little further out from the model than the original was. And you can see now that there isn't that sort of glitchy texture, it's just the logo there, which means that if we take the two, go into Boolean, and if we click on the part we want removed, which is the chest logo removed, it'll move it into the right column and turn it red on the view. From here, we can remove it with the red minus, but we want to make sure that the remove original parts is unchecked, and that will give us more control of the models and not just have them permanently adhered together. Click the green check mark to apply, and there we go. Now I'm going to turn off a couple of the different models so we can see clearly that we have a chest logo here and the purple is the fill with a deeper cavity cut into it to accommodate the logo. So there we go. We have a dual extruded fill ready to have the logo in a separate color. But if you want to do something like the gloves or the toe caps, you can't exactly do the same thing just because of the way the contours of it kind of intersect with each other. So there's a different way you have to go about it. So we're going to go through and duplicate the base fill again, because this is the one we're going to work with, and rename it to just toe caps. So that's the only feature we're going to focus on with this part, and we'll go into part repair, use the select surfaces, because it does a pretty good job at selecting the different parts that you want, and zoom in a bit, select the smaller faces that you might not see, like the very small lip here, and you want to be careful when you're selecting that you don't misclick, because what will happen is it'll select a different part and there's no undoing the selection. You just have to start over again and start reselecting all the different faces, just like what happened here. Had to go through, select the toe caps, select the little bits of a lip, and try all over again. Now, once they're all selected, we'll do the inverse again. We'll delete it, and there we go. We're left with just the toe caps, no other geometry, so we can work with these a lot easier. We'll go back into the extrude tool. We'll select both first, extrude, and rather than just a regular extrude, which if you try to pull it into itself, like it's removing parts from the model, it might actually go into the part you want. Like you can see that small lip on the side there. And it can get a little wonky doing it just that way. And if you pull it far enough in to not have that occur, you get a weird shape that it's trying to print with, which may not work with the geometry of the part. But with 3D Extrude, we can pull it outwards or inwards a lot easier. But you don't want to go too far, because then things get really weird. Now you can mess with real extrusion or thickening, smooth, improved to get what you want. What move, parts, what move points actually does is it will shrink the entire section inward, depending on how many millimeters you select. So move points will just pull everything in, one millimeter, two, whatever. But with thickening and real extrusion, it will make that part thicker. However, you may need to play with the settings or even do some cleanup work afterwards, because you can see here 
there's an interior to the toe cap and an exterior, but between the two, there's a weird trench that it kind of made. And so that'll take a little cleanup to work with. You can undo, try some different settings when you do the extrusion, and just kind of play with it back and forth to get it to work right. In my case, what I found worked best was to use the Select Surfaces tool and to actually go in there and select all the different faces that consisted of that trench and then deleting them. And this gave me more control over how I wanted that shape to actually be and using the different repair features within NetFab to just make the mesh the way I wanted it. Now once we have it deleted, we can go back in and try to do the repair and it didn't work again. So like I said, a little playing with it. What I actually did here was I used the add triangles tool to drag across the gap. And by doing that, it helps give NetFab a direction of how it's supposed to close that hole. Because it's trying to bridge between various triangles without a lot of direction. But by doing just this one thing, adding that one triangle between the two sides actually is a big help in trying to create a usable part. So if we go and close the holes now, it'll take a second to think on how it wants to do it, but it'll go through and actually cover up that entire trench and leave it perfect. There we go. We can apply the repair, remove the old part, and we have the toe caps. But like before, we need to go through, take the toe caps, 3D extrude them outward just a little bit so we have something to remove, and then we'll go in and delete them. So we have all the different parts we want to remove from fill. So we'll click the logo remove, the toe caps remove, click the red minus, give it a second to think. And when it's done thinking, we can go ahead and click the green check mark. And there we go. You can see his toes look a little weird because the toe caps have been removed. But now we have two separate parts for dual extrusion. We have the logo and the toe caps, which we will combine into one mesh. And then we'll have Phil with his weird looking toes and the deeper logo. And you can just repeat this for every different feature you want. And that's it. Now this is the method I use for making dual extrusion models, but I'm sure there's many other out there and maybe even something better that works for you. But in the end, I hope that this is informative and gives you an idea of how to take any sort of 3D model and make it better with dual extrusion. Don't forget, stay tuned for more episodes of How To. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.